learned two very important things today. Number one, the SCS custom cat bag system is the best sounding cat bag system in the world. Dollar for dollar. Number two, three inch intakes are tr so we had a really unique opportunity today at Soho Motorsports and thank you Nick and George for taking a little extra time with me on the dyno today it's greatly appreciated and really really awesome that we we're able to do this but we had the chance to actually get a true comparison between different intake setups so as you know if you've been following along we constructed the three inch intake system to see if we can pull a little extra power out of this Q50 and uh, it was really really unexpected but we got a chance to do a side-by-side -side comparison with those three inch intakes versus the factory air boxes. This was not planned, it just happened to work out and it is awesome. So I headed to Soho Motorsports this morning with the sole intention of testing these three inch intakes. And of course you don't wanna drive the vehicle with the three inch intakes without them being tuned. It needs to be reflashed. So drove all the way up there, got there early in the parking lot, changed out the intakes to these three inch suckers with the uh, big old AEM filters and uh, we hit the dyno. I've been talking about aftermarket intake systems for this car for a long time and most of you know how I feel about it. So I didn't really have high expectations. I thought maybe we could see a little bump in power and not much would change in torque or maybe it would because of the two and a quarter inch test pipes, but my expectations were really low. But a lot of people were telling me, hey, you're, you know, aftermarket intakes, you're gonna make 10 or 15 more horsepower. So I, internally I was a little excited, uh, but we got the car on the dyno. We did a couple pulls. Let's see what happens. Well, right off the rip, we can tell that this Speed Culture Studios custom catback system sounds incredible. But the other thing we saw is a little bit, a little bit of a shock. I mean, the losses were devastating. Before we go any further though, I should say that we shouldn't compare the numbers that we see today to any of the numbers that this car has made in the past or any of the numbers that I've talked about this car making in the past because a lot of things are different. Number one, the car's a couple years older now since the last time it was on the dyno. It's got about 15 or 20,000 more miles than it had the last time it was on the dyno. The rear diff fluid is about 5,000 miles overdue uh, from being changed. The car's got 65,000 miles on it right now as it sits. And most importantly, however, the temperature, the conditions are much, much different. The last time the car was on the dyno was early March. It was about 50 or 55 degrees outside with low humidity. It was ideal conditions. Today, it's about 95 degrees outside. I think Nick said it was about 100 degrees in the shop and humidity is over 55%. So not very good conditions to be dyno testing a vehicle. Uh, but for that reason, we're just gonna forget what the car made in the past and we're just going to truly focus on the numbers that these two intake systems make side by side. So the numbers weren't that great. So let's just do another poll and see what happens. <laughs> guys the numbers just kept getting worse and worse and of course that's attributed to the heat and a lot of people I know are gonna say well those are short ram intakes theirs are hot air intakes of course they're not going to work but remember guys the very first pull before there was a bunch of heat generated still the numbers were not good the numbers in my opinion not good what what were we at like uh, 327 ish 264 or something like that uh, so not terrible but definitely not as good. Even though my expectations were low, these were lower than my expectations. So again, I was not anticipating being able to do any side-by-side -side comparison. So I was a little bit heartbroken. I started asking Nick, well, what do you think? If I were to build the shields that I was planning on building, would that help? And he said, yes, you know, if we could keep the heat out of there, uh, it would prevent the car from losing power a pull after pull, but it wouldn't necessarily bring that peak number back up. So I talked about, well, what about the uh, Takeda intakes? What about, you know, a bigger intake tube that retained the factory air box? Would that help? So again, it would probably help with, you know, keeping that heat out of the engine uh, and keeping those uh, intake air temperatures down. But, you know, would the horsepower numbers improve all that much? not all that much that seems to be the consensus well then the question then comes to how about the long tube intakes that go down toward the front of the car again it would help keep temperatures down but for the cost 
and the effort it takes to get those installed if you can even you shouldn't really cut the radiator support it's not the best idea to do uh, the peak numbers you might only see increases of two or three horsepower that seems to be the consensus and that's exactly what i've been saying for years now even though everyone's fighting me hard 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 you're going to get 10 more horsepower you're going to get 10 more 15 more horsepower it just it's just not the case with that being said i was feeling kind of defeated so i was talking to nick well what, what can we do can we you know reflash it and what you know what, what and he said well you got the stock air boxes here with you right and i said yeah and we can change them in just a couple of minutes right yeah five minutes let's get them swapped out and he said jump up on the dyno swap them out we'll do a pull and we'll reflash it so hey that's what we did so this next pull is just literally factory air boxes put on the car and then just f flashing the map back to what it was when i pulled in the parking lot <laughs> So now we're getting some of these numbers back. Uh, it's 330, 265, something like that. Not, not terrible. The torque's a little low, but again, stay tuned for the next video. We'll talk about what these numbers uh, mean and uh, some of my theory behind them. But uh, we're looking at 330, 265, first pull, just going right back to the previous, uh, previous tune that we had on the car. Now let's do another one, see what's up. Okay, 331, 264, not terrible. Picked up a horsepower, dropped a foot pound of torque. So I think it's fair to say in these conditions with the factory air boxes and AFE drop-in filters, the car's making about 330, 265. Not too shabby. Again, everyone wants to make a little more power than the last time the car was on the dyno, but again, it's hot as balls out here and the humidity is quite high. So you can't be too mad at that. So the one thing that Nick did point out was that the intake temperatures with the factory air boxes was very consistent. Pull after pull after pull, it didn't matter. The car was getting hot, but the air that was being pulled into the engine was the same at like 35 degrees Celsius, something like that, if I remember correctly, which would be like 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, with the short ram intakes, on the other hand, uh, pull after pull after pull, the heat, the air temperature, the intake temperature just continued to rise, eventually reaching over 60 degrees Celsius, which is just, that's, it's super hot. And of course the car is not going to perform when it's pulling in that hot of air. And again, I know everyone is going to say, well, these are short ram hot air intakes. Of course they're not good, but remember the numbers that we made with the three inch intakes were from the first poll that was like the best numbers that the car made with these intakes um, so I, I i know heat is going to affect performance over time but that first poll you know if larger intakes were better that first poll should have been making better numbers in my opinion so i think this side-by-side -side comparison is really really valuable and i appreciate nick and george's dedication and commitment to uh, putting good information out there and i'm I'm, I, I hate to say I told you so, but this is what I've been talking about for a long time now. The factory air boxes are really, really good. And if you just simply upgrade the drop-in filter, I think you're going to be happy with the results and you won't have to spend the four or five hundred dollars. So a couple of things that we did learn. Number one, of course, is that the factory intakes are actually pretty good. And number two, short ram intakes are trash. Not worth it. Don't spend any money on them. Uh, but also I think I'm fairly confident in saying again what I've said uh, forever now is that you know that additional cost to go to an aftermarket intake system on the Q50 specifically is is not really worth it to get you know two or three additional peak horsepower it, it just it it's just not there for me it doesn't make sense well, I think the data that we were able to come up with today is really, really important information. I hope you guys found it helpful as you pursue future modifications for your Q50, specifically the Q50, of course. And thank you very much to Nick uh, for taking some additional time with me on the dyno today. You certainly didn't have to, so it is 
greatly appreciate it. I think we got some really good information for the people out there. And that's what this is all about. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll get to them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, there's, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. But stick around for the follow-up video where we take more of a deep dive into the numbers and we consider the two and a quarter inch test pipes and some of my theories in terms of why I think we got some of the numbers that we got today on the, on the dyno. So uh, more stuff coming. Um, I think it's going to be useful and beneficial for you all. So thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support. More good stuff coming up for the channel. We'll see you in the next one.